Hello, my name is Grandma Ginny. I work with RSVP of Dane County in their school volunteer program I call the Foster Grandparent. And I help out during the school year with kids who are learning to read and write and do math and interesting things like that. In the summertime, especially when it's hot out, I like to read a book. So today I'm gonna to read one to share with you. And uh, right now we're gonna to start to see the name of the book. And it's called, here we go. Mother Osprey. Mother Osprey is nursery rhymes for boys and gulls. That's silly, it's for boys and girls, but boys are things that bob around in the lake or the ocean. So you know uh, where there's an important mark and gulls are this kind of bird. So this is a little play on word, boys and gulls. This was written by Lucy Nolan and the person who made the pictures, the illustrator is Connie McLennan. And here we go. It says, what if Jack and Jill had been playing on a nice soft sand dune instead of that treacherous hill? Because there's a poem about Jack and Jill went up the hill and Jack fell down and broke his crown, got a bump on his head. And what suppose and suppose Mary's pet was not really a lamb. You know, Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. What if Mary had a little clam? A clam is a shellfish. Okay, that's what we're gonna talk about. A collection to, that retells Mother Goose rhymes and celebrates America's coastlines and waterways. And it even has a map at the end. Here we go. Now the trick is to try to make this a little bigger. So here we try to see what we can do to make it bigger. All right, that's as good as it's gonna be, I guess. Mary had a little clam. Mary had a little clam, its shell was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the clam was sure to go. He followed her to school one day. He set out in September, but reached the school in mid-July. Clams cannot rush, remember? Where were all the boys and girls to play with him as he dreamed? School was out for summer break. Boy, that clam was steamed. So here's Mary, the mermaid, and here's the little clam trying to keep up with her. And there's where they're going. Uh, um, nobody's at school anymore. When the clam gets there, he's steamed. That means he's kind of mad about it all. And here we have Jack and Jill. Jack and June. Oh, I said it wrong. Jack and June. Jack and June went up a dune. A dune is a hill of sand. To see the big wide water. Jack fell down and rolled around and June came tumbling after. There's Jack rolling around and here's June tumbling after. Jack and June all afternoon did stay in constant motion. Used their pails to bail and bail, but couldn't drain the ocean. Did you ever go to a lake shore or an ocean and dig a hole in the sand and then get water and try to fill up the hole? You can make a great big hole and put a lot of water in, but the lake or the ocean doesn't change very much, does it? And this is the boys and gulls. What are little boys made of? Made of? What are little boys made of? A bell and a light that flashes at night. That's what little boys are made of. This is a boy. Um, in Lake Michigan, which is about 100 miles away from here, there's something out there in the lake and they call it a bell boy because it clangs when the water rolls it around, it clangs like a bell. What are, <coughs> excuse me, what are little gulls made of? Made of? What are little gulls made of? Mischief and daring, and one pickled herring. That's what little gulls are made of. A herring is the kind of fish the skull is going to eat it, I think. All right, what's next here? 
excuse me, we have to try to get to next and this doesn't want to do it. Well, let me see now, because I have to make it a little again. Here we go. Um, this is Sing a Song of Sixpence. I used to know that one, but I don't anymore. Sing a Song of Sixpence, a pocket full of hay. Four and twenty pelicans fix a luncheon tray. Look at these pelicans. They have the biggest, heaviest beaks, and that beak kind of can sag down and fill up with food or fish or something. So four and twenty pelicans fix a luncheon tray. When the tray was finished, the birds knew what to do. They set this very dainty dish before the trawler crew. This is a trawler. That's a boat that drives kind of slow and tries to catch fish. The first mate ate his sandwich while hauling in the catch. The captain ate more slowly while sitting on the hatch. The deckhand asked for seconds. It was his favorite dish, a little peanut butter, and lots of jellyfish. Oh my goodness, would you eat a sandwich with jellyfish in? I don't think I would. Ooh, peanut butter and jellyfish. I guess that's what pelicans think makes a good sandwich. What do you think? And here we have one called Row, Row, Row Your Boat. And that was a song I knew too. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. But this one is different. It's row, row, row your boat. Start in Biscayne Bay. If you come upon a shark, row the other way. Don't want to row to a shark. Row, row, row your boat. Now the glades begin. Never touch a floating long, a log with a toothy grin. What do you think they mean a floating log with a log with a toothy grin? I think they mean a crocodile or an alligator. Row, row, row your boat through the Florida Keys. If a pirate asks to ride, make sure that he says, please. Sometimes pirates aren't too nice. Row, row, row your boat round and round Key West. Now your arms are surely tired. Stop and take a rest. That would be a long way to go. We'll see it on the map. One flamingo, two flamingos, three flamingos, four. A flamboyance of flamingos is a group of three or more. First a goose and then some geese, a gaggle in a lane. But if the geese are flying, then the gaggle is a skein. A band of roving jellyfish is called a smack. How odd. And whales that swim together form a group that's called a pod. I'm gonna see if I can make this bigger again. There we go, that's not much bigger, but maybe a little. Seagulls from a colony and curfews, and curlews, let's start that one again. Seagulls form a colony and curlews form a herd. This is, where are the seagulls? Where are the seagulls? There they are. And these are curlews here. Seagulls form a colony and curlews form a herd. But cormorants are called a gulp. They're such a silly bird. These are cormorants here. A school of fish, a shoal of bass, a wriggly swarm of eels. Here's the eels. Here's the school of fish, and I guess these must be the shoal of bass. So the wriggly swarm of eels, call them anything you want to me. They sound like meals. Yeah, people eat all of that, I guess. When puffins float together, then their group is called a raft. And herrings make an army. Have you heard a thing so daft? Daft means silly. Sardines form a tight-knit group, like mom and dad and me. Perhaps that's why a sardine clan is called a family. I didn't know that. Did you know that? Here's another one now. This is called Hatteras is Falling Down. Hatteras is falling down, falling down, falling down. They tell me that she's losing ground, my fair lady. 
Batteries must be this light uh, here. Batteries light. Build her up with wood and clay, wood and clay, wood and clay. But wood and clay will wash away, my fair lady. Shore her up with mortar and bricks, mortar and bricks, mortar and bricks. Mortar and bricks won't do the trick, my fair lady. Let's move her from the ocean's reach, ocean's reach, ocean's reach. Half a mile beyond the beach, my fair lady. Everybody clear the way, clear the way, clear the way. They tell me that it's moving day, my fair lady. Isn't that the strangest sight? Strangest sight? Strangest sight. Down the road comes Hatteras Light, my fair lady. Let the ocean crash and pound, crash and pound, crash and pound. Hatteras Light is safe and sound, my fair lady. So they, apparently this light was on the sand at one time, and then they moved it higher up and away from the water so that it wouldn't get all broken up. Let's see what's next. Ooh, ride a wild mare. Look at their wild horses just running on the beach. I never saw that. Ride a wild mare down the beach, if you dare, to join the fat ponies gathered there. I've heard they're the children of mares and stallions who swam ashore from shipwrecked galleons. Oh, my goodness. I guess if you have a big boat and there's horses on it, they could swim away. Hmm. I didn't know that. Look at here. This is an old woman who doesn't live in a shoe. She lives in a shell. This is a shell. There was an old woman who lived in a shell. She had too many children to fit very well. So she added an attic and three or four sheds to make room for all of the oyster beds. Oh my goodness. Children and oysters all in bed together. There's the attic. There's some sheds. That's a cute picture. Lobster pies. Old Mrs. Wise made lobster pies all on a winter's day. Her greedy son grabbed every one and took them clean away. What a surprise for Junior Wise lay inside that cracker sack. When he sat on a bench to eat a pinch, the lobster pies pinched back. Look at those lobsters, they've got big sharp claws for pinching. And this is Lydia Gale. Lydia Gale. Lydia Gale has lost her whale. Oh my goodness. He's somewhere around Nantucket. Leave him alone and he'll make himself known. He's hiding in her bucket. You think there's a whale in that bucket? Oh, look at there might be a little, little tiny whale there. I never saw a whale that tiny though. There we go. Oh, the witch of November, 1913. Do you remember the storm of November, howling wind, high sea and snow? A change in the air caught the ships unaware and roused the witch below. The season's last load of cargo was stowed, howling wind, high seas, and snow. But the grain and the ore would never see shore. How could the crewmen know? No warnings were heard as the cauldron was stirred, howling wind, high sea, and snow. Eight freighters were gone from Lake Huron alone, as the witch let her fury go. Wow, eight big boats went down in one storm. The overturned price was shrouded with ice, howling wind, high sea, and snow. The Argus, it's told, cracked apart from the cold in a sad and eerie show. The lakes heaved and tossed, so many lives lost, howling wind, high seas, and snow. More than 200 souls filled those sorrowful rolls, the crewmen of long ago. When the lakes are like glass, the memories pass. Howling wind, high sea, and snow, but always remember the witch of November when autumn winds start to blow. November is around Thanksgiving time, and sometimes there's even a little snow, but there's usually you know, dry leaves and cold weather starting to creep in in November. 
Sleep, baby, sleep. Sleep, baby, sleep upon the river deep. The Mississippi rolls along. It hums a peaceful nighttime song. Sleep, baby, sleep. Sleep, baby, sleep. The moonbeams dance and leap. The paddle wheel sings and sighs. It spins out gentle lullabies. Sleep, baby, sleep. Sleep, baby, sleep. Upon the river deep. When morning comes, you'll be with me. Your cares will drift on out to sea. Sleep, baby, sleep. Would you like to sleep on a boat? It might be nice because it might kind of rock you with the water. Oh, here, look at here, sunshine. Two skippers from Texas. There once were two skippers from Texas who were both standing watch on their ducks. Two boats, apparently. When the two ships drew near, neither skipper would veer. So, except for the wheel and a bit of one keel, the two ships are now just Rexus. To veer means to turn to the side. And if neither ship turned to the side, then they collided and broke up their ships. Do you think that was smart? I kind of don't. I saw a ship a sailing. I saw a ship a sailing, a sailing on the sea, a sailing on a sea of grass to where the land was free. A family walked beside her just like sailors at the rail, the gallant prairie schooner drifting down the Oregon Trail. There was salt pork in the barrels and apples in the hole. The canvas bonnet crackled as the wheels creaked and rolled. The schooner trundled onward through the wind and sun and rain. Watch close. The prairie schooners will not pass this way again. So this is what I would call a covered wagon, but they were also called prairie schooners because they looked like they had sails like sailing ships had. And that's how people moved before there were cars and even before there were railroads. And these people also moved cattle with them. They had a couple up here and a cow in the back. And mostly they walked because they had a heavy load with everything in there. Imagine if your family had everything in one wagon your beds, your shoes, that would be quite a lot. Next page. Oh, here we are. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Tweedledum and Tweedledee one day went for a paddle. They planned to see the okra, pad, okra pods. Oh, I'm saying that one. It's not okra. It should be orca. Orca is a kind of fish. Oh, now they're going to go back. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We'll just scoot ahead to those pages again. They made a mistake in this book because okra is food, but these kind of whales are called orcas, O-R-K-A. So we'll say orca when we read that part. Tweedledum and Tweedledee one day went for a paddle. They planned to see the orca pods that swim just off Seattle. Remember, pond is a group of whales. They've eaten okra many times. They liked it in their gumbo. They hoped to see a monstrous pod. They hoped it would be jumbo. Oh, I see what happened. They did think they were going to see okra. They didn't know they were going to see whales. But 14 hours later, killer whales were all they found. Oh, I did it again. All right, do it again. Well, this is an adventuresome day, isn't it? Full of human mistakes. Okay. 14 hours later, killer whales were all they found. Where were the pods of okra that live in Puget Sound? If Tweedledum and Tweedledee could spell, they'd know the score. Orcas frolic in the waves. Okra stays on shore. Here's the orca. Orca, orcas, yes, and here's the okra, little pods of okra. 
effective. Sometimes you see that in gumbo and soup, stuff like that. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at this one's about what? Sea lions and otters, I think. Hark, hark. Hark, hark, the sea lions bark. Who's that swimming by? There is a stranger about with a whiskery snout and a twinkle in his eye. Who's there? The sea lions stare. Who's that heading their way? Who misbehaves while making waves at sea lion rocks today? Oh ho, I think I know who's playing in the water. A mischievous clown splashing up and down, just doing what he otter. Otter. Otter sounds like ought to or out of otter, but there's a clown, otter. Otters like to play in all kinds of places. So now, let's see, this is um, too little to read. So we have to stop now. Well, I hope you liked that book. And um, we'll read another one in a little while. So this one will be good to read with your parents and you can tell them every time I make a mistake because there's quite a few mistakes in there. Um, stay smart and have a good day. Bye now.